Are we actually going to take a pause? No, we have work to do. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the topic of, of pausing, <coughs> resting, of disconnecting from the busy, busy, busy. Um, I also want to give credibility, uh, credibility. I want to give credit to the Praxis organization who uh, a year or two ago, they released a little pamphlet called The Rule of Life for the Redemptive Entrepreneur. Praxis is an is a entrepreneur-focused uh, organization, sort of like a Y Combinator mm -hmm. for Christians, and uh, been wildly influential for us. But they, this Rule of Life is really about uh, a series of practices designed to counteract all of the stuff that the world gives us that fragments our soul, that drives us into the shallows. Um, and one of them is this whole notion of, of rest. Right. Now you, John, I think from Tiffany Schlain, years ago, yeah. started taking a digital Shabbat, I think you mm -hmm. called it. Tell us how that's gone and what the response has been from people. It's been life-changing for me. So I think, when was that? 2008, was 2000, yeah. I don't know. It was a long time ago. And I've mentioned before, my role at Soma has primarily been in the marketing side. But I've done marketing for Saddleback Leather, uh, Natural High, different companies, um, lots of different brands. And what that does to you, you're always on. You're always, yeah. it's the next thing, it's the next app, it's the next device. And you're always trying to keep ahead of the curve as far as like what's coming next, um, what to expect in the market, how to market better. And it's just exhausting. And I remember we were, it was the movie Connected. If you haven't seen mm -hmm. that, we'll put that in the show notes down below. This film that she did when her father was dying of brain cancer. And she noticed how disconnected she was from her own dad, who's dying. And they were writing a book on the neuroscience of the brain, right? Was that the uh, Goddess versus the Alphabet? Yeah. Fantastic book. It's just So she did this film called Connected, and it was about what this is doing to us. And the good side of connection, but also the dark side. Yeah. And so she, we were at, at dinner with her in Portland on the premiere, and she challenged me. She's like, she could just tell. I'm like, you know, oh. <laughs> And she's like, John, I challenge you to take one day a week screenless, like uh, shut down the devices, turn off the screens and go analog. And it was like, first I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. And I, I took her up on it and I've been doing that pretty consistently, not every week, but pretty much every week, uh, at least one day a week trying to step back from technology. And it's changed yeah. so much, just my attention span. And I'm even challenged today to do it more. I think uh, that was 10 years ago. Just in 10 years, I think the, our attention is being grabbed at more and more, oh, yeah. even then. Um, and I can imagine it getting worse from that point. It has, a yeah. lot worse. I think, uh, I don't remember who said this first, but it was the idea that at the heart of our resistance to Sabbath and rest is actually mm -hmm. trust. It's, right. our, it's right. our unwillingness to trust that things are going to be okay without you. Yeah. That you can let stuff go, that you can let the phone ring, sure. and that it's gonna be okay. Yeah, It's this, and it's, when someone put it like that, that it's really about trust, this huge light went on. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, that, that really, and that's what makes it so hard. Well, and, and the science is backing it up. It's not saying that we don't work hard. There's not seasons in our lives where, you know, crunch is needed. I hate that word, but it's true. Like we're in a, we're in a place right now, we're pushing a game out, we're trying to get it out. All of us are working a lot. Programmers, the artists are working way more than us, but we're still putting in the hours. Like Chris and I, as the leaders, we're on 24 seven. Yeah. And it can just exhaust you. But if you're at that all the time, your whole life, you will wear out. Yeah, oh yeah. And the creativity drops. Yeah. Like the studies show that the creativity drops. And the productivity. Productivity. Errors. Oh yeah, yeah. errors. In fact, if you are working more than eight hours a day, they show that mistakes go way up after eight hours. I just saw, I just read a study today that said that people over 40 shouldn't work more than three days a week. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. No. But, Perfect. But all these studies are coming out that saying, like you talked about the trust piece, but the truth of it, the science of it is, is that we are designed to take rest, to yeah. go fallow for just a period, to get recharged, to come back at it. Things. Right, right. So yeah, that, I I like how you said that because it's not about being lazy. It's not about no. it's not about all that. It's about realizing that people have this necessity just to sleep. And in the purely kind of more monastic tradition, there's this great idea from Bernard of Clairvaux who who advocated that people lived not as canals but as reservoirs. The mm -hmm. notion being that we can get in a in a pattern in which everything that comes into us, out of good motives, out of really good heart place, but everything that comes in goes immediately out. Right. 
Um, it's our time, it's our energy, it's our focus, it's our empathy. Yeah. But all those things are limited resources from our perspective, not from God's, but from ours. And so if we live as canals, everything comes in, goes immediately out, and we find ourselves yeah. dry. But if you live as a reservoir, you let that come into you from time with God, from yeah. everything else, and it fills you. And once you're filled, then what overflows, that's what goes out to the world. Yeah. And now, you know, minus that little bit that it takes to fill you, it's the exact same amount of work, of compassion, of joy. Yeah. But now it comes from a place of wholeness, mm -hmm. and it comes from a place of rest, and you're not fried. Yeah, I'm real excited. At the, at the conference we talked about, we were just at, John Eldridge gave everybody manuscripts of his new book, Get Your Life Back, Everyday Practices for a World Gone Mad. And uh, and he talks about all these different things we were bringing up and and trying to practice in here and, and the science behind it and and all this is the spirituality. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving it, I'm halfway through the book. It's very good. I'm, I'm taking it slow. I'm, right, not, speed, it, right? I'm not speed reading, <laughs> um, but awesome. We're excited to share that. Uh, well, Can I, mean, I just geek out a little bit? Like, sure. We got manuscripts. Manuscripts. Not like advanced copies. Like this, were, this, this really geeked me out like, <laughs> And there's spelling errors in here. Yeah. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, it's really cool. But that's, and, and you know, it was just funny. Like, I don't know if we could hear it on the, on the video, but a whole bunch of wild geese the just geese. flew by. Yeah. And you don't get that inside. It never, right? And so just getting the natural part of our our life back a little bit and it doesn't take a lot um like we said the one minute pause it's a beginning place but it's not yeah. the end it's, it's a total game changer yeah yeah and to kind of close a loop with regard to our practice for jesus time we would really encourage anyone who's going through these videos make it that rhythm right it's not about powering through it, it there's yeah. no point in rushing the, the notion of a relationship with god includes that he gets to talk back <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so you got to make time for that. Otherwise, we're just like walkie talkies with the transmit button all the time. Right. And, uh, and what he has to say will always change, will always change your world. So we hope that's been beneficial and we'll talk to you in the next one.